Hi and welcome back to freesciencelessons.co.uk. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how electrons are transferred during ionic bonding. You should then be able to draw dot and cross diagrams to show ionic bonding. We've seen that electrons exist in energy levels. This shows the electrons in the element sodium. Remember that the first energy level can hold two electrons, the second and third energy levels can hold eight electrons each, and the fourth energy level can hold 18. Only the elements in group zero have a full outer energy level and we call group zero the noble gases. In this video we're looking at ionic bonding so let's start by looking at some key facts that you need to learn. Elements react in order to achieve a full outer energy level and by doing this they achieve the electronic structure of a noble gas, in other words a full outer energy level. If we look at the periodic table we can see that metals are found on the left hand side and non-metals are found on the right. Lots of reactions in chemistry involve a metal reacting with a non-metal. When this takes place we're seeing ionic bonding. Let's start by looking at ionic bonding between the metal lithium and the non-metal fluorine. So here's lithium. Lithium has three positive protons and three negative electrons. Because there are the same numbers of protons and electrons, the charges cancel. So an atom of lithium has got no overall charge. Here's fluorine. Fluorine's got nine positive protons and nine negative electrons. Again, because there are the same number of protons and electrons, the charges cancel. So an atom of fluorine has got no overall charge. I'm using crosses to show the electrons on the lithium atom and dots to show the electrons on the fluorine atom. That's called a dot and cross diagram. Remember all of the electrons are the same, whether they're shown by dots or by crosses. We can see that neither lithium nor fluorine has a full outer energy level. When we react lithium with fluorine, the lithium atom loses its outer electron and the fluorine atom gains it, like this. Now both the lithium atom and the fluorine atom have got full outer energy levels. Looking again at the lithium atom, we can see that it still contains three positive protons, but now we've only got two negative electrons. This means that this now has one overall positive charge, and I'm showing you that here. We call this the lithium ion. An ion is an atom with an overall charge. Looking at the fluorine atom, we can see that we still have nine positive protons, but now we've got 10 negative electrons. This means that we have one overall negative charge, and I'm showing you that here. We now call this the fluoride ion. Both the lithium ion and the fluoride ion now have a full outer energy level, in other words, the electronic structure of a noble gas. So remember that during ionic bonding, group 1 metals lose one electron, forming a 1 plus ion. Group 7 non metals gain one electron, forming a 1 minus ion. Both ions now have a full outer energy level, just like noble gases. OK, now one final point that we need to mention is that we often see exam questions like this. We're seeing the reaction between sodium and chlorine, and the question's asking us to describe what's happening in the reaction for four marks. Now one key point is that we're only shown the outer energy levels, and that's because these are the ones that we're interested in. So if we're describing this reaction, we would say that one electron passes from the sodium atom to the chlorine atom, and both atoms achieve a full outer energy level. You'll find plenty of questions on ionic bonding in my revision workbook which you can get by clicking on the link above. In the next video, we're going to look at ionic bonding between a group 2 metal and a group 6 non-metal. OK, so hopefully now you should be able to describe how electrons are transferred during ionic bonding. You should then be able to draw dot and cross diagrams to show ionic bonding.